I found a good little web page the other day that you might want to check out. The page is a list of fallacious arguments, some of which are very familiar to me, some of which are not. But looking through the list, it got me thinking about people I've had arguments with in the past and back then I failed to recognize the fallacious arguments that were being used against my position by certain people. Another thing I had to recognize while going through the list was my own flawed fallacious arguments that I'd employed at one time or another. Anyway, here are a few things you might want to look out for the next time you're in an argument with someone. Okay, excluding the middle or false dichotomy. Assuming there are only two alternatives when in fact there are more. For example, assuming atheism is the only alternative to fundamentalism or being a traitor is the only alternative to being a loud patriot. Genetic fallacy. I've come across this one a couple of times before. If an argument or arguer has some particular origin, the argument must be right or wrong. The idea is that things from that origin or that social class have virtue or lack virtue. Being poor or being rich may be held out as being virtuous. Therefore, the actual details of the argument can be overlooked, since correctness can be decided without any need to listen or think. Argument by dismissal. An idea is rejected without saying why. Dismissals usually have overtones. For example, if you don't like it, leave the country implies that your cause is hopeless, or that you are unpatriotic, or that your ideas are foreign or maybe all three. If you don't like it, live in a communist country adds an emotive element. Appeal to force. Anyone who threatens violence against somebody just for disagreeing with them has surely lost the argument from a civilized perspective, I would say. Threatening lawsuits, as the author of this list points out, is another common type of appeal to force, and it is quite common on the internet, I've noticed. Argument by vehemence. Being loud. Trial lawyers are taught this rule. If you have the facts, pound on the facts. If you have the law, pound on the law. If you don't have either, pound on the table. The above rule paints vehemence as an act of desperation but it can also be a way to seize control of the agenda, use up the opponent's time, 
or just intimidate the easily cowed. And it's not necessarily aimed at winning the day. A tantrum or a fit is also a way to get a reputation so that in the future no one will mess with you. This is related to putting a post in uppercase, aka shouting. Appeal to anonymous authority. Like when you say, experts agree, blah blah blah, or scientists say, blah blah blah. I've been guilty of that one before, on more than one occasion, I'll admit that. Failure to state. This is quite common on the internet, I've noticed. If you make enough attacks and ask enough questions, you may never have to actually define your own position on the topic. Look out for that one. Okay, appeal to complexity. If the arguer doesn't understand the topic, he concludes that nobody understands it. So, his opinions are as good as anybody's. False compromise. If one does not understand a debate, it must be fair to split the difference and agree on a compromise between the opinions. But one side is very possibly wrong, and in any case, one could simply suspend judgment. Journalists often invoke this fallacy in the name of balanced coverage. They do indeed. Argument by selective reading. Making it seem as if the weakest of an opponent's arguments was the best he had. Suppose the opponent gave a strong argument, X, and also a weaker argument, Y. Simply rebut Y and then say the opponent has made a weak case. This is a relative of argument by selective observation in that the arguer overlooks arguments that he does not like. Very common. It is also related to straw man, of course, in that the opponent's argument is not being fairly represented. Yeah, so go check out the page. Maybe you'll learn something. Perhaps you'll view past arguments in a different light and approach future discussions or exchanges in a more careful and considered fashion. Perhaps. Anyway, I will see you next time, folks. Take care of yourselves.